Thank you for listening to or watching the Upland Down Under podcast. Tonight's show is recording live on Wednesday, the 11th of October at 7.30 p.m. AEST, which is 8.30 p.m. AEDT. On tonight's show, we're going to catch up on some crypto and Upland market news, of course, and then Swally's got a little segment, and then we're going to dive into some general Upland news, including checking in on the October neighborhood rating scores, the Sparklet White Paper vote, the first Stock Car Pro Series exclusive car sale, there's a bunch of stuff happening with and around the NFLPA partnership. There's the latest Masters Builders contest complete with a fresh controversy. We've got the Totem Reveal Chapter 3, including a wild community theory. And, of course, it's Halloween season, so we've got the 2023 Halloween bundle sale coming up and a Halloween wearables challenge. Uh, because there's so much to cover, like, just in general this week, and I need to try and get out and wrapped up a bit earlier tonight. There's not going to be a particular main topic for this evening. The Spark proposal vote, however, is arguably the most important current event. How'd you go? Voted yet? Everybody in chat voted? Don't have to say what you voted if it's a secret. Yeah. Still waiting? Oh, sorry. No, I voted yes. Um, like, I've, like I've always been saying, I'm optimistic. Very cautious. Um, very concerned. It had obviously go up or go down like anything in the world, but I voted yes. It's more fun to just see what happens, I guess. Grizz has got a yes. Yep. Um, I actually spent a bit more time going backwards and forwards on this one than I was expecting, largely due to me putting in or putting out a twin set of vote yes and vote no videos through the week. I had to do a bit of kind of back background research for that and you know a bit of critical thinking. Uh, I tried to take an unbiased look at both sides and ultimately, yeah, I did vote yes. Uh, the personal push that I needed to head in that direction was the prospect of Upland garnering more mainstream attention. But he's hoping that we get the spruced spark utility before getting kicked in the face with the crypto volatility. Utility before volatility, please, Upland. We've also got some additional Web3 and Meet Cityverse news to cover. Actually, no, I... Of Axe, the Meet Sudiverse news for this week. Um, Got to save some time. and But we do have an interesting quips on the future and purpose of Upland. And I've got a bunch more Samurai Aquatics map assets to give away. And I'll be outlining a new weekly contest challenge for the NBA server. Stick around, stick around for that one because it is, you know, one of the favorite times of the year, Halloween. So there's some pretty big giveaways to all play out over the next, what do we got? Probably three more shows in October. So, yes, all that and more on this, the Upland Down Under podcast. If you're wondering how you can take part in the live recordings of this podcast, where well, you have to be in the NBA server, the link to which is in the description. I drop the link to the Zoom every Wednesday night at about 7.15 p.m. Australian Eastern 10, Standard Time, which is very early in Grizzly time, we just found out. So thanks for taking the time to get on board, Grizz. All right, let's have a look at the breaking badly news and see what's currently happening in some of the crypto and upland markets. Few caveats here when we get to the upland stuff because, oh my gosh, there's a bit of a bit of pain in the butt action happening on with that. But anyhow, we'll get to that in a second. This constant roller coaster with the crypto, as I said last week, one week we're up, one week we're down, little bits nibble nibble. This week's a down week, except for a good old wax. Look at that, doing well. So the crypto market cap has dropped back down 2.9%, but still over the, the 1 trillion and Bitcoin dominance up 1.2% back over 50%, which is interesting. So yeah, all of the coins that I cover on this show, um, all down, 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 except for WAX, as I said, up 10% back to 0.046. What else? Bitcoin's only down a fraction. Ethereum's down a bit. Uh, Ripple's gone back under 50 cents, was 53 cents last week, down to 48 cents. Not much happening with Solana. EOS is kind of flirting with that 50 cent range again. Polygon's also flirting with 50 cents. Cardano's not much happening there. Tron's down for once. And then the others, not much happening. Gala, down a whopping 19.5%, was 0.016 last week, down to 0.013 this week. Fear and Greed Index, still in the neutral, down two points, was 44 neutral last week, down to 42 neutral this week. Yes, um, up, down, up, down. As I said last week, I think there's still more blood to come. I want more blood to come. Got to shake it all out and get moving. It's getting boring. 
Have an upland 90 day average trading volume is what are we down 2.1%? Uh, 1891 transaction volumes actually up this week, up 0.5%. Uh, 32.650 million in transactions. Unique active wallets down was 54,520 for last week, down 2.8% to just over 53,000 this week. Total unminted properties, we had about 3,000 properties minted through the week, which going off probably our last couple of averages is actually up a bit. So I wonder if that's got something to do with some of the various challenges and whatnot that's going around. Now, the city market stats, uh, oh boy. Um, I did play around on Apex land today, of course. And for whatever reason, I don't know if it's a problem with um, the API or Apex land not being updated. A lot of these numbers were just um, wildly inaccurate. So, the ones in yellow here, they're the ones that I actually checked manually. So well, any of the other cities there, you've got to take with a grain of salt because it could be who knows what. But still, there's a fair bit there that we can dive into. Um, the one marked in green, that's your best opportunity for buying in UPX and selling for UUSD. Detroit, buy for 4150 flip three. Um, Rutherford's currently your worst buy for 36,299 flip for only $11.50. So you get smashed there. Of course, on the flip side, if you want to buy for USD and sell for UPX, that's currently your best bet. Um, Tokyo's not doing real great with that as well. Same with London buy for 38,770 sell for 14. That's a fairly wide gap. The other two best opportunities are Buenos series and Queens. Queens is interesting buy for 5,299 sell for $3. Although, as I keep saying, those $3 floors, just don't know when they are, um, how long they sit there for. Um, all of the cities that are marked in red font on the left, those are the ones that have locked properties, jail properties on their floors. And my gosh, the, some of those here, I think it might have been Buenos Aires or Rio, one of those ones, there was like over a dozen or something. Um, yeah, that makes it a real pain. So, Obviously, I'm not going to sit there every Wednesday evening and manually check every one of these cities. I'll do what I can, but you know, hopefully it gets updated. Anywho, what are the numbers actually telling us? Um, just like to look at the double digits. Arlington down 12% on the USD was bang on $7 this week. Down uh, Last week, sorry, down to $6.25 this week. Berlin's also getting smashed on the USD was $8.40 last week, down to $7.50. Um, big drops in Buenos Aires. Now, some of this might be, last week I've got the figures in there, 6,500 UPX. That might have been because there was a locked property there and I hadn't checked it. So, again, that's a bit of a grain of salt. Although that's gone up, hasn't it? Yeah, so who knows? That, that might have been higher just with those balked properties on the floor. Nevertheless, up from the figures we had a look at last week, Chicago's flat on the USD because it's at the floor $3, but bit of a boost there on the UPX and that's starting to get to the number that I might be able to sell a few more. Um, I minted a bunch all around the two, 3,000 mark and I flipped out all of those back when I was over 6,000 and I think, I forget exactly, but I think my um, base mint price now might be around that 5,800. So once it starts getting up to that level, I'll be able to sell a few more because I've still got a giant bag in Chicago. Detroit getting smashed on the UPX was 4,900 last week down to 4,150. And Las Vegas is up on the USD and the UPX. London's up on the UPX, down on the USD. What else is sticking out? Not much. Porto up on the USD. Well, it's actually got off the $3 floor. That's interesting. Floor was $3 last week, $3.40 this week. And what's happening in Santa Clara? 13% boost in the UPX flat on the USD. So that's looking pretty healthy there. 29,000 last week, 33,333 this week for Santa Clara. Sao Paulo is up 13% as well. And Tokyo up on both the UPX and the USD now at 25,300 on the UPX and bang on $9 for the USD. So yes, um, I'm sure you would if you were doing anything with floors. Make sure you go and manually check those yourself. But yes, hopefully UPX land or the API or whatever it is that's balking all that out. Hopefully it sorts itself out because that is 
a bit of a pain to sit there and try and do it all manually. If somebody has a better way or a better system and could let me know that, I'd definitely take that on board as well. So that's all I've got for the general market updates. And that swings us over to you, Swally. What, what do you got for this this week? Before we kicked off, it did sound pretty interesting. You're on mute, mate. Oh, you? there you go. Yes. <laughs> I realized as I started talking. My apologies. Um, all right. So let me find the right screen to share. It should be activated for you. Yeah, there you go. Take chat away from it if I can. There we go. Um, all right, so a couple of weeks ago, it might have been last week, you're talking about how you're not happy that Tokyo doesn't have enough Tokyo-style buildings for the release. That's so the build on. So obviously, you've got all the same type of buildings, the, the apartment buildings and townhouses and whatnot yep. in Tokyo. Whilst I don't disagree with that, I also don't think Upland needs to try and stick to the real world. In that sense, so yeah, okay, we've got Tokyo release in the city, that's cool, but doesn't we have now got a fork in the road, so to speak, where Tokyo was one thing, we're now creating another thing. Um, and what I mean by that was, it, and if if you own property in Tokyo and want to put a Tokyo style building on it, happy days, user generated content, and I wish there was a lot more of it and a lot more options for us to choose from, but you know. Upland's getting there slowly, and maybe if they are trying to pass it over to more of these competitions that you're having at the moment, who knows what we'll get in the future. But maybe not so much limited to one city, which would be nice, but I think people have mentioned that before. So I go back to this fork in the road. So when a city is released, Upland try and replicate that as best they can, correct, to what the real world is. But what happens from that point onwards is it's up to us Uplanders to create which is what the rebuild the world doesn't say rebuild the world exactly. It's rebuilding the world. However, we want to rebuild it. So obviously San Francisco was the first city release. So this is the most likely one that's going to have changes from when it was first released. Um, with my sad three little properties in San Fran. But so what I wanted to focus on was this block here in San Francisco. So it's in sunset. And at the moment you can see that the upland version on the right is pretty much the same as the real world version on the left. So it's only it's not a best example of it, but I just quickly had a look around this afternoon and this one that I found. Um, so this is a proposed building that they want to build over there. I don't know how far into it or whether it's going to go ahead or not, but they want to put this big ass um, hotel type structure on where that nursery is at the moment. So. Um, which would effectively, obviously, they're going to use up the whole block. So this has only had two properties on that block, but what happens if it had 10 properties on that block? Does Upland then change the game to suit the real world? Well, of course not, because there was a fork in the road, and it is what it is. So my question is, well, why can't we do the same in Upland where you can... So this is my showroom in Queens. It's not been used for anything, but let's say I ran out of space and wanted more. Why couldn't I buy up the space around it and merge it into one property? Or vice versa, if you had a large property, why couldn't you subdivide it? Now, there's obviously implications with that, like with um, collections and stuff like that. So there'd have to be some sort of rule set there that merge or subdivided properties probably couldn't go into collections. Um, but that was just something that I think Upland could consider for future use, especially with something like factories and stuff, and you just don't have enough space or showrooms that you can, or even those little tiny blocks of lands where you can't even put a a uh, micro house on it you could yes. buy the one next door and you could build something bigger or an apartment block or something um because once the city's released in my opinion once the city's released the San Fran being best part of four years ago it's now on a different path a different timeline there's a fork in the road what happens in the real world no longer mimics what's happening in upland and I think we need to take that on board and and go with it yeah well it's it's some fair points you made there. There's there's a few things to touch on. Um, property merging has been talked about oh, three years more, three or more years. It's been talked about property merging may be a thing. Um, I'm, there's so many areas that I wish that was the case, um, especially in like Midtown Terrace. There's a bunch of things that I'd love to do there, but I just can't because all of the properties are small. I'd love to be able to merge, like as you said, 10 properties or something into one giant one to give me a bit more flexibility for what I wanted to do. So hopefully that's one of these eventually things. Um, 
Yeah, I don't or know. Even how... vice, or even vice versa, where you got a whole block and you can Break divide it up. it up and to, and then put like 10 townhouses on it. Again, I don't know why you'd want to do that if you can't use it in a collection or something like that. But I can see why you wouldn't be able to put it in a collection because you just buy one property, split it to three, and there's your collection done. And I think that would defeat the purpose. I um, think splitting it would probably be easier than merging because merging, you'd have to essentially burn NFT. You'd have to have a burn mechanic in there to burn some of the properties. Or you add them together or something. Again, this is above my paper, yeah. how you do it. That, that's why people get a lot more money than they figure these things out. But it's just a thought a thought that I had and just something I'd like to be able to see an option down the track of being able to merge or subdivide properties because we are on our own timeline. I think the game is separate. Sep once it's been launched, I think it's on a separate path to the real IRL. If we're not going to stick to IRL, well, then let's look at all the things that we can do to the game to make it different and put different aspects to it and and so yeah, on. No. So that, that, that's my Swiley's thought for the suggestion for the day. Yeah, well, as I said, it makes sense. My, my um gripe with the building uh, variety has always been that um, it just kind of seems lazy. Like the the UGC community can do these things. Give it, give them time to do it. Um, mm. it all it, it seems lazy and after the fact. Um, you know, we're, we're I don't know how many years we've been building for now. That's got to be coming up on three years as well, and we're still building the same town as yeah. it is changing slowly. Yes, absolutely. I'm a hundred percent behind you on the fact that we don't have enough variety, and with Tokyo being released, there should be an option. I mean, there surely have been an option to put a Tokyo style building in Queens or anywhere else in the world. Yeah. And no doubt there is probably something like that, like restaurants and stuff like that, usually try and go to some sort of theme. Um, like, I do agree 100%. We need a lot more variety. And I guess mm. that'll come in time. But yep. I don't necessarily agree that just because we have a Tokyo or a Japanese city release, that we need to have it filled with Japanese buildings. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like we have seen this. There's an example of this in LA. There's ex example buildings that look really good in LA, but they're kind of geo-locked to LA. So yeah. that's kind of yeah. – it'd be nice to put some of those yeah, – like, A lot of these of... – yeah, a lot of these UGC buildings that they create are only for one city and one city only. And I, yeah. Why? Why not, why not have it – we should be able to choose from hundreds of buildings. Yeah. Um, and we'll touch on that later because there is a master buildings competition kicking off at yep. the moment. Um, one, when we first got the structures, because uh, I was I was part of the the first people to ever get Spark and was be able to test around and play with putting structures up, I put feedback in immediately saying the scale of these is way, way out of whack. It doesn't make any sense. Like if you look at some of these properties where you can't even put up a small townhouse, but if you look at the street view, there's freaking, you know, mm. there's clearly a building there. So I, I think from the very earliest days, they've kind of messed the scaling up, which has played into, I don't know, perhaps that's why they've been reluctant to do more themselves. I, d I don't really know, but yeah. Oh, the micro house is supposed to fix that and it very much didn't. The chode home, that's what we call it. Yeah, we need one that's we need one that's a whippy, needs to be long and narrow, not short and fat. With a very skinny base plate. Yes. All right, well, thank you for that, mate. And we will have to wait and see. But yeah, property merging, that's something that's definitely on a lot of people's radar, that one. All right, speaking of neighborhoods and building and construction and all of that sort of stuff let's check up and have an update on the current neighborhoods ratings leaderboard and where is that yep that's up so monero is well out in front currently on 13.339 followed months we it looks close but it's actually a crap ton of work to get in there to just move that by fractions so Hollis Woods up next, followed by Midtown Terrace, Greenwich Village screaming up the chart, of course, as we've covered, and Red Hook and Quailwood. Now, I believe I did mention, might have been last week or the week before that, well, I think it was last week, that Quailwood was, looked likely that they were going to make for a big push, but I believe they've just backed off on that for the time being. They're going to focus on helping out a few different projects, such as Creedmoor Hub and whatnot. Um, so I have to keep an eye on that one. So who knows? It might be... Might be Monero's month, but don't discount the um, the Manhattan Greenwich Village crew because they surely do know what they're doing. So with all that said, let's dive into a whole bunch of Upland news and Swally and I were talking 
about this before he kicked off. Um, he said he hadn't really been up to date this week. I was definitely most certainly not up to date with a lot of things. So this is going to be one of these um, episode shows, whatever you want to call it, where <laughs> we're flying by a seat of our pants and I'll be learning just as much as I'm spitting out there. So bear with us on this one. But easy one to start off with, the Sparklet White Paper Boat. Uh, we've covered this extensively. Um, several videos on the Upland Down Under channel and a lot of the other um, broadcasters have got stuff out there too. If you're still undecided and you're not really sure um, which way you're going to vote, I put out two short con uh, short length videos that cover both sides, the yes vote and the no vote. Um, especially if you're looking at 2x, if you're listening or watching at 2x speed, it only takes a couple of minutes to go through those. Um, the vote is ending... When is that? Wednesday, October the 14th. So uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, 4 p.m. PT. What's that? Tomorrow night, our time, something like that. So you still got time to get your vote in. And make sure you do because it's, it's going to be very interesting to see what the numbers are on this vote. It's always a bit disappointing to see with these kind of official vote things. When you see the number of eligible voters and the number of people who actually voted, it's, um, we always talk about how Upland's got the best stats as far as community numbers go, but when you see the voting stats, it's like, wow, really? That's They're very low. So Get out there and have your say. So that's one thing. Next up on the agenda, and I believe this is happening tonight, is the Stock Car Pro exclusive car sale. Now, Swally, you said you weren't getting involved in this. didn't really interest you. No, nope, shaking his head. It wasn't really going to interest me either, but then I got a deal for a memento through the week and I thought, you know what, I'll just give it a go. So I, I grabbed a memento and I was part of the snapshot, luckily. And then I, as part of the email for the snapshot, I realized that, well, actually this is a USD only sale, which I should have, I don't know, is it written in here? Sale details. No, see. Oh no, it does say, so that's on me, sorry. I was about to have a big wine there, but that's on me. I should have looked at that. Um, price, $100 US. For Australian dollars, that's about, oh, when it's all said and done, probably 100 and probably pushing 150 something like that. Up higher, you reckon? Yeah. And I just happened to cash out all my USD imbalance um, recently. I didn't think I was going to need that until the next totem sale. So I'm kind of caught with my pants down on this one. I will get up. At, I believe it's 2 a.m. Hang on. We'll kick off. The stay will kick off Wednesday. Oh, no, that's not tonight. I was saying that was tonight. That's tomorrow night, isn't it? That's right. I can sleep in tonight. Registration starts. I registered. Yep, I did that. And the sale will kick off Wednesday, October 11th, 9 a.m. PT. Yeah, that's 2 a.m. my time Thursday. All right. So I can sleep in. Sleep through tonight. So, yes, there's not many of these. I believe 36. Is that the number I saw? Yeah, 36, 100 bucks each. Um, of those 36, 11% are pro cars, 22% are com competition cars, and 67% are trainer cars. So there's multiple lots of RNG here. Um, I have zero luck with RNG, so have to see how we go. I will, I think I will inevitably, if if I happen to be lucky enough to, first of all, get a good RNG position in the sale that I actually even have a chance, um, that's one step to get over. And then, of course, make sure I don't screw it up, purchase it online with the credit card, which is going to sting. And then it's you roll the dice, see what you're going to get. Um, I'll have to wait and see on that one. The person that did the trade with me for the Memento, once I realized that it was a USD only, so they're like, oh, but if you get one, you'd be able to flip it for USD. So maybe that's my play. Who knows? Maybe that's what I got to do. I don't know. Anybody else in chat? You're all in on that? Excited? Stock cars? I wasn't really going to have anything to do with it. It is in the morning, really said. Well, why am I screwing that up? Why am I getting that wrong? I thought it was. What did I mess up there? Registration closes. Sale starts Wednesday, October the 11th, 9 a.m. PT. Which is Thursday, 2 a.m. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, I'm thinking Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. Ah, well, there you go. 
I don't know. I'll get one and try my luck. See how we get. Um, did you get involved in that? Anybody in chat? No. Good luck. Shaking heads. Nopes. All right. Well, if stock cars aren't your thing, perhaps. Oh, no. There's one more thing I had to mention there. Um, the We did get a message from Squall Muzzer on Upland saying that you can't use iOS for that. That's actually a blessing in disguise because especially for me, I'm going to try and get myself out of the habit of doing anything USD on the iOS version because if you do do that, remember, if you do have a USD balance there, you won't be able to buy with the USD till your balance and you'll get janked back to the back of the line. Um, it's not an issue if you're going to buy with a credit card, of course, or however you set it up through. But yes, um, have to participate on the web so that was an interesting one thank you for letting us know that in advance so yeah if stock cars aren't your bag then perhaps nflpa is now it's interesting that there's actually a whole bunch of stuff kicking off with this once i sat down to put all this together i was like hmm, okay well, i actually bought my first set of nflpa legits for the week so we do have the NFLPA 2023-2024 bundles. Um, all of those are sold out now except for the is it the essentials. They just it seems like you can just gobble them up as much as you want. And I believe I saw a thing too. Correct me if I'm wrong. If you go to if you, it's your favorite team and you go to their stadium, you can buy the ones that are specific to that team or something like that, which that's a nice change. So that was one thing. And when I did my bit of clickety-clacking, what's happening in the news? Well, look at that. There's an, actually an article here on finance.yahoo.com. Upland, NFL, PA, and one team partners to expand the NFL player integration in Web3 for the 2023-2024 season. Nice to see a bit of news kicking about there. Um, it's not very heavy on the details. It's just a basic overview of what Upland is, yada, yada, yada what the stuff is. Um, the NFL PA via its marketing and licensing arm, NFL Players Inc., represents over 2,000 active players. Yeah, yeah, we know all that. Uh, is there any good stuff about the NFL PA? Yes. About one team partners. Now, this is what I wasn't, wasn't aware of. One team partners, the group licensing partner of the NFL PA leading their gaming business, represents the commercial interest of over 10,000 players, spanning a whole bunch of sports alongside thousands of athletes. Blah, 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 blah. One team maximizes the collective value of athletes' rights through group licensing, marketing, media, and other ventures. That's cool. Hopefully, this is a sign of things to come. Um, more partnerships, more exposure as, as we keep wanting. We need um, to get some fresh blood in, but as I keep saying, hopefully, this comes with some cross-promotion as well, which I don't know. Was there a name on this? News Direct. No. But anyhow, good to see Upland in the news. Yeah, I don't know. I think there was something else. Yeah. So then there is a NFLPA fan score challenges as well. I didn't buy anywhere near enough legits to get into this and it doesn't want to load. So we'll just skip right over that and race on through. So that was that. All right. Now, this is something that Swally and I were just talking about is the Master Builders Contest, Berlin, London, and Tokyo. And my goodness, a um, bit of controversy kicked off with this. Has that been on your radar, Lily, Swally? Anybody in chat? Have you caught up with this? A few of the UGC content creators got their noses a bit out of joint on this one. Oh, the rewards? Yeah. Yeah, they stink. Why, Lily? Why? Why have they done this? I have no idea. I mean, the only reason to enter, if you're looking for, you know, some kind of thing to get you to enter and put your time aside to make time to do it is the spark. And no spark. Yeah, it's bizarre. Really bizarre. All right, I'll bring it up just to run through it. So, yes, we got Master Builders 2023. This is, We've had several of these. Um, this one's specific to Berlin, London, and Tokyo, which is cool. Um, now, 
in this edition of the Master Builders Contest, we'll add new player design structure models to three prominent upland cities, Berlin, London, and Tokyo. On top of that, the winners of this contest will be rewarded with the prestigious Master Builder badge and a property with their winning structure built on it. Okay. So Master Builder badge. Does that hold any value other than a bit of a flex? No. Um, oh, it's nice to have. Most of but them already have it. You don't go out of your it. way to get it. Yeah. Well, you don't, you don't go out of your way to get it. It's just it comes with winning. But, yeah, it's nice to have, but it's not an incentive. No. A property with their winning structure built on it. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, you would assume that's tied in with the relevant city. Uh, if you're talking about somebody like yourself, Lily, who yours was the Lily Tower, that was a package like that was quite valuable. If you had to buy the land and the spark hours to put that up, what do you think that would be valued at in San Fran? Oh, 600K at least. Um, more. Yep. yep. Due to the property size. City, yeah, in any other city, not as much. Mm. Except Manhattan. Um, yeah, well, that, that would be a big one. But where, what are we, Berlin, London, Tokyo? Mm. There's a lot of big properties still in, no, I think London's gone, isn't it? I know there's plenty still in Tokyo, big ones. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess, yeah, that's kind of a carrot. That's kind of cool. Um, but, odd mate, there's Jack and... Zarina's guides have combined here over on Twitter. I Desjack did put this in Upland General, but um, I'm just using Twitter because it's ease of use over here. So Desjack, um, she put out a, a post here. So comparing it, it is this now right. Uh, there was a lot of backwards and forwards in the UGC channel, I believe. So the old master builders, uh, there was two versions that you had to put through, a normal and a wireframe. The prize was one spark. So that's valued straight off the bat, $460. 100,000 Apex Master Builders badge. The new Master Builders, you need to put through five versions, normal NFT, wireframe, Lotto, Lotto O, Lotto 1, Lot 2 version. The prize, you get a property with your building on it course and Master Builders badge. So basically a hell of a lot more work for a greatly reduced prize. I, w I wonder why they axed the spark on that because I know for, I know it's probably for yourself too, Lily. And I know from speaking to um, Desjack and I'm going to say death ender because I've had to use his name death ender so many, so many times this week, uh, but it's D tech. That was the biggest carrot of all for them was the spark. Absolutely. I mean, I only entered the one competition, but I did it for the spark. Yeah. So, I mean, why have they accent? I don't know. Um, it's got to be frustrating because they've been talking about uh, royalties for the UGC content creators like us for the outdoor decor. Um, when did that all go? That was put out as a thing probably six to eight months ago. We were like, oh, finally, they've made mention about this to fall in line with the general NFT things. But for master builders, there's no ongoing kickback. Um, they just get to use your your designs, your work in perpetuity. Yeah, so you're basically um, getting a small reward for giving them the rights to something to do whatever they want with because it's not even really spelled out what you're giving them the rights to. Um but you are getting paid something for it, which makes it a, a transaction. But it just doesn't seem equal here, does it? No, not for the amount of work that goes in, um, especially when you're playing with the, those LODs. Um, yeah, if you don't know what that is, it's... it's Level of what, detail. Yeah. So do you do that all manually or is that an automated process? I know, is it the LODs? I know back in the day, or maybe it's the map, there was sometimes on those uh, really detailed structure, not structure, but it's uh, outdoor decor uh, assets that we were putting out there. DTEC was sharing us the, um, <laughs> it's like a puzzle piece. He has to fit all of the different pieces into this puzzle that gets sent through. 
Yeah. Um, a lot of people do it manually, but you can trust Blender to have a brain. Um, it does generally do it in all the right places and if you're scared of where it's going to do it you can just select certain faces where you're happy to lose lose your vertices and then tell it to do it for those ones only um, so you can kind of trust it and you can tweak it in case you don't but I know DTEC has never really trusted it to do that yeah yeah but all in all, it's just a crap ton of work. No, no matter which way you want to go about it, it's it. That's kind of stuff that would just eat up hours and hours and hours. I, I would imagine. It can, yeah, yeah. So a six nine six has said in chat, kind of pushes people to create huge structures to maybe at least get a large property out of it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah. I, why would they axe the spark in there? I can only assume it's because of this spark proposal. Perhaps they're um, wanting to not get that out there but so many of these ugc content creators they're at the minimal amount of spark necessary to apply for some of these things and to manufacture um and as i said that was the biggest carrot of all so yeah very very disappointing to see that come through have to wait and see yeah it is disappointing but on the other hand you'll have a whole new batch of people whom might get a chance to win um, and and might enter. So, I mean, there are heaps of people who have just learnt Blender. So, you know, hopefully there'll be more and variety of people. Yeah, and it's like those, I mean, if you look on the, what is it, the donut, the donut community 3D creation server that's out there, there's so many people that have ideas for, different projects, um, but they don't have the 3D construction skills necessary to see them through. So there's a bunch of people looking to um, team up with people or work with people or even, as you said, learn these sort of skills. So um, if you are willing to put the time and effort in to do it, it's, you know, that's not, you're not losing value there because it is a valuable skill. Although who knows where AI is going to take all this stuff to. So. Yeah. Scary. Some people... I'm sure we'll go down the AI path. Yeah. All right. Well, I, what about yourself? Are you are you going to enter in this one? No, Ben. I work 15 hours on your average day. I don't have time. Ouch. Yeah. All right. I do know DTEC is working on one, and he shared a few bits and pieces. Looking pretty good. But, yeah, they're – especially um, somebody who's as pedantic as he is, and I say that, in the most positive way possible. Yeah, a lot, a lot of hours. So good luck, everybody, oh, he's great. who's getting out there. He's great. He's he's come such a long way from when he started. It's great. Yeah, so funny to chat to him too. Like, because he, he's had his, I believe he's got a structure ornament factory. He, he's got a map asset factory, a carts factory. He's got all, all of these things, but he's been... He keeps getting distracted with, oh, you know, do you want me to make this for you? I'm like, dude, stop doing anything for everybody else and just make some stuff for yourself. So he's been really reluctant to crack that seal. Um, but he's, he's kicking off. And as you can imagine, some of the stuff that he's working on is really, really cool. Yeah, he always does cool stuff. Yes. All right. Speaking of cool stuff, we did have – now, I wasn't expecting this one for a couple of weeks. Um, this kind of caught me, again, with my pants down as far as my USD in-game balance goes. Totem Reveal Chapter 3. Sharks and Pandas. I don't know. Were you expecting this one this early? Is this going to be the norm? A couple of weeks? Bang, bang, bang them all out? No, I keep setting myself broke on properties. Yeah. Yeah, I was expecting at least a couple of weeks. Um, shark, I mean, that looks cool. Panda looks pretty cool, I suppose. Um, unveiling the secrets of the stem tree. That was a pretty cool, cool video that was put out. That has kicked off a bunch of theories in Upland General. We'll get to that in a second. Um how to acquire a totem recap. I think we're all over this by now. You got to register, get it a pass and be lucky in the RNG to get the pass. And then you hand it in and be luck, 
have some RNG luck there as well. Um, so all the same details. I don't think we need to touch on that in too much detail. But this next part, assuming that's going to work for me, and it doesn't. Wow. Well, well, all right. I'll let that do its thing. Um, did you see this this morning? It kicked off, I believe it's Coates, Coates DL or somebody has a theory that because of the way some of it was worded, um, he seems to believe that if you're going to want to have to do anything with the so-called stem tree, you're going to need to have 10 passes. 10 passes to unlock or operate the stem tree. Here it is. It's finally working. So, yeah, it was 6 a.m. this morning, our time. DL Coats 1, sorry. Apologies for that. So, hey, guys, remember my theory I mentioned about needing multiple totem passes for the stem tree? Pretty sure they just confirmed it. So where's he got that from? Um, the part of the Upland stuff they put out about it, it says, United by Destiny, Miles and Gaia joined their mystery passes together. Now, interesting that it says their mystery passes. It doesn't say their totems. The hands trembling with anticipation as the charm merged and incandescent light enveloped the room, revealing ancient inscriptions etched upon the walls. The hidden power of the charm unleashed a mesmerizing spectacle. Ten empty AI totem bases awaited their awakening. Well, that says totem. It was at this pivotal moment that Miles and Guy discovered the significance of the mystery passes. Using the mystical artifacts, they activated the totem and then it's cut off. What do you think? Is he reading too much into this? Because if you take that at face value, it kind of sounds like you're going to have to have, you're going to have to have unhanded in passes to unlock the slots, the totem slots. Uh, this kind of triggering my FOMO a little bit. Yeah, it's very vague, though. I mean, in true Uplander style, we could read a lot of things into it. Yeah, yeah. Um, that kind of scares me, the mystery passes part. They join their mystery passes together. So if you've already, if you've already traded in your mystery pass and there's some aspect of needing a mystery pass and that hasn't been put out there ahead of time, that's going to get a whole bunch of noises, noses out of joint. Well, there, there aren't enough for sale in total for everybody to have 10. So I don't see how it can be that way because nobody's going to get that. Well, only a very few people are going to be able to purchase that on the secondary. So. Unless it's going to force like the community work to work together somehow, like a collaborative venture, we got to pool our unused passes or something. I don't know. Like you said, there's a lot to read in there. It's also interesting that it says ten empty AI totem bases awaited their awakening. So, does this mean you're also going to have to have at least one of each of the totems? Yeah, no idea. No idea. When I read that and when I read Reddy's thing, it was just before I was getting ready to go to work and I was like, the first thing I did was go over and look at the secondary markets and my FOMO quickly, quickly got, quickly got um, neutralized because the secondary prices are just outrageous, absolutely outrageous. If people are actually selling them for them, for that kind of those figures, um, 300K for... Some of these, you know, some of these toucan totems, 350k, 150k for passes or more, hundred dollars US. Um, the prices are astronomical. So, I have my empty map asset store, and I wanted to put something in it for sale, but of course, I don't have anything to put in it for sale. So, I was going to put my totem in there, and I was going to list it for like three million or something, and then I went, no, I can't risk it. <laughs> Yeah, it would be fun to have it there. It's, it's just a fishing price. But if you have a look around on Twitter, or even every now and then someone will share a screenshot in Upland General, people are they're gobbling them up. I've seen screenshots from people, 10, 15, 20 totems. They must be going hardcore on the secondary. So, wow. 
deeper pockets than me, or they're all in on that FOMO dragon. What's Ace said? Ace 696, given how many unclaimed passes will be left, it doesn't leave much option for most to start the process. They've sold quite well, but the market has slowed in the last few days. Yeah, especially like with all of this other stuff that's going on. Um, I doubt I'm the only person who, who this just came completely out of the blue. Like I don't even have time to, you know, go and buy up some up Apex floors and try and flip for USD. It's I may have a lucky sale unless you're going to go on a, um, on just an absolute, burnout sale to try and get some funds but yes um as i said it was actually good news for me to see the inflated secondary process because it just puts me completely out of the loop and then i kind of reflected on it at the end of the day too like i don't actually plan to do anything with stem yes it'll be nice to get some yes you, you want to have something at least have you know your finger in the pie a little bit but going all out and collecting all 10 um I mean, if you're somebody who wants to not manufacture, but if you're somebody who wants to grow plants or you want to breed pets or something, if that's going to be your UGC stuff, then yeah, maybe you've got to go all in to cover all those bases. Um, I have to wait and see, but yeah, that definitely, definitely opened my eyes at least this morning. Thank you for sharing that DL Coates. I might be just a crazy out there theory, but there's been plenty of times when those crazy outdoor theories have actually come to fruition. So who knows? And if that wasn't enough to just completely drain your accounts, well, we also have a bunch of Halloween stuff coming up. Now, I believe it is open now to start decorating your buildings, etc., with the Halloween structure ornaments. Anybody all over that? I We kind of covered that a few shows ago where I'm just not even going to deal with the crates. They're definitely in the too hard basket. Um, I mentioned just before that I was going to call DTEC Death Ender because that's his in-game name. And through the week I listed, well, first of all, I had to move 120, 40. I had to move 280 map assets from the San Francisco factory to the LA showroom for to put on reserve for cheese and DTEC. So I had to move them one at a time and then I had to individually list them on reserve for them as well. So that was pretty much my Sunday watching the Bathurst 1000 race, sitting there for five hours, moving mass at, map assets for the whole five hours. Um, so yeah, anybody all over the decoration? Did you, did you move your crates? I got up yesterday morning and decorated my buildings. Yeah, good on you. Um. Has there been any word about the, you know, it, it's normally every Halloween we get to do um, special block explorers. Like from back in the day, we got to design and submit our own Halloween themed block explorers. Has that come through? Or oh, didn't get a chance the costume. To look at it? Yeah, yeah. The costume. You know, they haven't mentioned that, but they usually do activate it. Let me look and see if it's activated. Yeah, it's, I've been out of the loop. That's one of those things I, I meant to check out. But yes, nevertheless, there is a fair bunch, a fair amount of stuff going on with Halloween this year, which is cool. Uh, Halloween 2023 bundle sale. When I first read that, it was bundle sale. What are they selling? Legit. But it definitely seems that they're working themselves into a system where you know you buy something and you use that for something else. So Halloween 2023 bundle sale, get ready to embrace the spooky spirit of the haunted season because we've got some exciting news to share. We're thrilled to announce the upcoming Halloween bundle sale, yada, yada, yada. Uh, you can get some block explorers, map assets and wearables, mark your calendars, registration begins Sunday, October the 15th. So this weekend and sale will start Monday at 2 or 3 goddamn a.m. again. Bundle sale details, yes, yes, yes. Apex bundle quantity, 400. Apex bundle price, 30,000. Making them, oh, that's pretty pricey. For, I believe, you get you get a block explorer and then you get a chance at a map asset or a wearable. Block explorers, what do they go for? Between five and 5,000 for the low-end ones, 20,000 wearables. Maybe it's not that bad, 30K for a while. Maybe, it's, maybe I'm being a bit harsh there. Um, same for the USD. So a total of 800 available. So you're in with half a chance. If you register for all of them, you at least got half a chance depending on your RNG luck. 
Halloween Bundle contains a unique mix of two NFTs, including one block explorer and an additional 60% chance at a map asset and a 40% chance for a wearable. Um, what do you think about these? I thought the map assets looked pfft, interesting. The wearables looked freaking amazing. I love it. Yeah, you're all about them. Oh, uh, yeah. I so want all of them, but of course I won't probably get a good spot in line. Yeah, oh, I, I checked the costumes. They're not yeah. available. My evil Lily hasn't popped up either. All right, so we'll have to wait and see. Um, it might be towards the end of the end of the month as we get closer to Halloween. Yeah, I said the same thing about the, um, what was it, those Japanese map asset cats. I said, oh, I'm not going to bother with those. And what do you know, I ended up gobbling all three on the secondary market. So who knows? Um, yeah, I <laughs> the block explorers look cool. I like those. They have a kind of a unique look about them. Um, so I'd be definitely willing to get my hands on one of those. The map assets, little kind of gremlin y troll looking things. I don't know. They look like they've been squashed. They look like versions of 626. What's that? Oh, really? Little creature from a movie? I don't know. Experiment 626? Lilo well, and Stitch. Oh, Lilo and Stitch. And Stitch. <laughs> yes, my kids weren't all about that, so I missed that phase, unfortunately, or fortunately. Yeah, yes, but now like that you say that, it does look like that, yeah. <laughs> so, I'll, I mean, I won't be disappointed if I get one of those, but I do would definitely prefer the wearables. I think they look absolutely killer. I'll swap you then. There you go. All right. It's a deal. Um, yeah. Unless it's one of these pumpkin ones. I'm not really. That's probably be my least favorite, which probably means I'm destined to get one. Um, all the other ones look really cool. The mummy wrap looks pretty good. Yeah, it does. I know you're pretty quiet over this, Wally, and chat's pretty quiet. What do you think? All about these Halloween bundles? 30K? 30, 30 I bought bucks. one last year, so I might pick up one or two. But yeah, I'm not right into all this sort of stuff, which is why I'm remaining silent. <laughs> yes, what's chat doing? Nothing. All right. Yeah. Um. As I said, it's the whole kind of crate situation's kind of put a bit of a damper on me for this year. But I'm just a whiny old prick anyway. So who knows? Maybe it's just me. Now, was that all the Halloween stuff? I think there was one more thing, wasn't there? Um, oh no, Halloween wearables challenge. So while that's loading, let me bring that up. I hadn't read this one either. So let's have a look here. Yeah, so that's a closer look at them. Yeah, these look really cool. Um, I like the skelly and the monster one. So would you like to win a fantastic Halloween wearable? Why? Yes, I would. Then get ready for the Halloween wearables challenge. This exciting challenge kicks off Wednesday, 2 a.m. tonight or the, in the morning, wraps up on Monday. Have a grand total of 140 Halloween wearables up for grabs. So plenty of opportunities there. Challenge registration required. In order to participate in the Halloween wearable challenge, you must fill out the re registration form. Oh, there you go. I better remember to do that. And otherwise, you won't win it, of course. Halloween wearables challenge. What do you got to do? Specific stuff. Each player is eligible to win a maximum of one Halloween wearable. Um, all right. Here's what do you got to do? Oh my gosh, that's tiny running. Send to a unique meta venture. Must be a block explorer shop, legit shop, structure ornament shop, or mass hatches shop. I wonder if I can send to my own. That'd be interesting. Make a purchase from a meta venture. Must be a block explorer shop, variety shop, structure ornament shop, or a map asset showroom. Well, that's cool. Collect a Halloween block explorer. Complete a Halloween block explorer series. Oh, that's expensive. Or it can be. Um, that's cool that they're kind of getting it out there to get some more exposure for the UGC creators and the um, – what's the word? I'm blanking on the word. MetaVentures owners. So that's good. But yeah, if you're completing a Halloween Block Explorer series, that would get very expensive. If you want to go back and buy a very OG zombie, of which I believe there's only four, and I think I have the, the Splitter Mint, maybe? Um, that's for sale at Midtown Terrors, Block Explorers in Midtown Terrace. I think I've, I've like Lily said, um, I've put that out there at a fishing price. I think I put it at three grand. 
Who knows? Someone might come along. FOMO into it. And what is a block explorer series? A block explorer series is a collection of specific block explorers that share a common origin, such as from the same sale bundle challenge or other in-game events. Um, have either of you or anybody in chat, have you played around with that? Is there a way to set that as a completed as a completed collection in the UI or is it just something that they're going to snapshot on or something? Yeah, I have no idea. I mean, I have lots yeah. of series of things. Yeah, I don't know either. I know there's, you know, there's people that went all in on buying like the aliens or the Bruce, Bruce burners and that sort of thing. I just don't know if there's a way to actually set that as a completed um, collection in the UI. I don't know. Anybody in chat? Uh, Ace is off. Thanks, Ace. Don't know. Well, hopefully there is because, um, yeah, I wonder if that's the case. Did it say there? I just X'd out of it. Did it say there if it's collect a, complete a Halloween block explorer series? So is that going to register if you've already got one or are you going to have to redo it? Who knows? The mind boggles. And that is all pretty much all I have for uh, Uplandy News. Anything else on your radar this week, Lily or Swali? No. No? All right, then. We should be able to race through this next few bits because, like I said, I need to get out of here early this week. If I can work out where I'm up to, um, let me get out of there. Now, uh, yes, uh, I got this ready too because um, as part of the the – the Spark proposal voting system that's going on. Um, at least one of the negatives that I picked up on it and put out there was the Ethereum gas prices. So, um, if you're not, if you're somebody who's not like aware of what all that means or what that's actually going to entail, I did find this website that tracks the average Ethereum gas prices here, and it give you some indication. Um, of what we could potentially be in store for. So, you know, at the moment we're pretty low. It's around the eight, ten dollar US mark to do any sort of transaction with Ethereum, but there's plenty of times where there where it's spiked up to the twenty dollar range. What are we up there? Sixty dollars. And then of course, if you're talking about a an event like the Board Eight Yacht Club minting or some full on event that's happening where a lot of people are trying transacting, uh, sometimes it can get up over $150 US and sometimes it just gets even like just absolute banana levels way above that. And if you're playing around with MetaMask, um, maybe I don't, did you want to speak on this, Swally? As when you're playing with MetaMask, you know, you can set your gas fees. This is one of those aspects where I think people that don't know what they're doing could get themselves in trouble. Like if they try and set the wrong gas fee. You can adjust it slightly, but only slightly. So you can speed it up. It's probably the most common thing to use, which means you just go from $10 to $12 or something like that, just throwing numbers out there. Yep. But you can't just chuck in, I'll pay $1 for a transaction or something like that. It just won't happen. You can't so, do that? I don't think so. I think it'll just sit there forever. If the current rate's eight ten dollars it's just going to sit there and, not, and fail. And I've not changed. tried lowering it down too much. Yeah, definitely not lowering. You, if if yeah, if if you try and lower it, you're just gonna it's gonna fail, or you're gonna it's gonna take my, forever. My understanding, most people just tick with whatever it's set at, or speed it up if they want something to go through, especially if it's time sensitive. Yeah. Um, I guess from our point of view, what we're really hoping is this ends up on an exchange like Binance or Coinbase, because then the gas fees aren't going to be as significant. Like you still yep. got to get them in and out of Upland. Still going to be fees there, but at least the transaction of buying or selling will be absorbed a little bit by the exchange. But if it's just on um, a cent decentralized exchange, then it's fees all over the place. So it's $10 minimum, and that's still heaps high. That's still way too high for something that we're doing, I think. Um, and that's bear market $10. It's probably going to be upwards of $100 by the time Spark actually gets onto an exchange. Yeah. If we're yeah, back in the middle of the bull run. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um I think from memory back in my ICO days, um 
I'm sure it was MetaMask where there were certain ICOs that everyone was in a mad panic to get, you know, pre-sales or whatever for, and you just, you flirt with the numbers on there. Okay. I'm going to try and speed this up. And yeah, it's, it can be a tricky process. And um, there's been plenty of articles and you see this every now and then where someone paid some extraordinary amount of, of Ethereum in gas fees to buy something that wasn't even half that value or something. Yeah. yeah so. Like a million dollars, but they usually get that back. Yeah. Or at least a fair chunk of it. Yeah. So it, it can be a pretty sketchy kind of thing to navigate, pretty difficult thing to navigate. So uh, fingers crossed we end up on a Coinbase would be the absolute best outcome. I think if Upland did join up with them and end up there, that'd almost solve a lot of the problems straight off the bat. Yeah. And then, um, Oh, sorry, and they've yeah. got their own base. They've only got their own base layer now as well, which could easily be the sec- next or second layer for that they're going to use, which is obviously on Ethereum anyway. Um, so, I mean, I think we're twelve months away from this happening, but yeah, I don't know. I think it's too early to be worrying about stuff like that. Yeah, and if you're worrying about it, then you're not selling or buying Spark on the Open Exchange. Yeah, I'm definitely in it for the roller coaster. I I did. When we were talking about it last week, I did say that if if it's not on an exchange that I'm already KYC'd on, I'm not going to play around with it. But I've been thinking about it this this week a little bit. I think, um, assuming it's not just some horrendous, you know, very dodgy exchange, if it's a half decent exchange, I'm thinking I'm probably just going to dollar cost average in just for the hell of it, just to be part of it from the process, whether it's five bucks a week or ten bucks a week or whatever it may be. Um, just to see, just to be part of the well, roller coaster. It's definitely interesting to see. I mean, we're us current players are all conditioned that Spark's four hundred and sixty dollars or forty six cents for a Sparklet. So, I think initially we're going to have trouble buying it above that price. But if we see it under that price, we're probably going to snap it up. Now, in time, that'll probably taper away and become just a normal type thing. But that's why I can't see it really going up early on because I just don't see anyone buying it as soon as it hits anywhere near the forty six cents. Because we're yeah, just conditioned we... to that being the ceiling price anyway. Um, but yeah, if it drops down to like ten cents, like you'd be almost crazy not to buy it, wouldn't you? Yeah, well, that's um, that's one of those things where we we can't really speculate on the price too much because um, not financial <laughs> advice. Do your own research, and Upland's all about putting the kibosh on that. But yeah, um, who knows? That that's why I think if if I just play around for shits and giggles, if I put whatever, whether it be ten bucks a week, if I just put it in there. And it's just going to be something interesting, something else interesting to track just to see where it goes. Who knows? Well, that's fine if it is on a Coinbase or centralized exchange, but yeah, you wouldn't be able to do 10 bucks a week on like any no. sort. Yeah, you're not going to get anything, are you? It's going to be oh. crumbs of crumbs. <laughs> you get point one sparklet per $10 <laughs> transaction. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, I I, I did say that I wasn't going to play around, but I, th- I think it will. If it makes any kind of, you know, logistical wait, feasible wait sense yeah. for me coinbase if they somehow do deal with coinbase i think it'll be massive um outside of that i can't see them doing binance binance is too expensive they would they would want like a million or two million dollars worth of the coin for free and i don't see i plan doing that not that coinbase don't do something similar but they could do a partnership with them yes i'll have to wait and see as you say all right in other news a few little bits and pieces to touch on uh we haven't an article here from golfbusiness.com, golf as in G-U-L-F. Metaverse market could reach $900 billion by 2030, reveals report. That's a lot of cash. As consumer and enterprise applications become more immersive and collaborative, Bain finds it's unlikely that the Metaverse will emerge as one singular platform. Of course it won't. There is already multiple multiples. Um, yeah, $900 billion though it may remain in the seed stage for at least another five to 10 years. How are your diamond hands? Are you willing to hang around doing this up and down eventually period for another five, potentially 10 years? If you're, sure. asking, if I'm going to spark, sure. sorry, if you're asking me if I'm going to hunt for five, 10 years, absolutely not. Um, yeah. My, like I was saying before, my personal plan at this age, at least is to try and cash out, what I put in at some point and then use that as my starting point. Yeah. So I'll definitely be around five, 10 years. I think I just don't think I'll be hunting for five, 10 years. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
yeah, I'm the same. Um, definitely be sticking around, assuming that everything's still up and running. I'll definitely be playing around in some capacity. Um, companies that engage in the metaverse's early stages of development, sounds familiar, known as the seed stage over the next five to 10 years are more likely to lead the market. Well, what are we? We're already 2019s when it kicked off. So, you know, we're coming up on a good chunk of that. As the metaverse quickly evolves, we've already seen these types of technologies take hold with different industries. Yep, yep. A good example of this is immersive gaming platforms, hello, hello, which are already boasting hundreds of millions of monthly, hundreds of million active, monthly active users. Oh, that must be talking about um, Fortnite, et cetera. Uh, and while it's not immediately clear how the metaverse landscape will shift, our research shows there are five competitive battlegrounds that executives should be considering if they wish to get ahead and eventually scale. This is an ongoing journey toward more immersive and collaborative experiences enabled by rapid improvements in the underlying tech, he added. Um, metaverse will not be a singular platform. Yeah, I mean, anybody who thinks it is going to be is a bit strange uh five key areas are virtual experiences although gaming is currently leading the consumer metaverse application immersive fitness and entertainment could also be compelling in the medium term yep ba, ba, ba. content creation tools there's a growing field of software tools that provide the building blocks editing platforms and interfaces for creating metaverse worlds and experiences spatial is a good example of that these features make it easy for users to generate content Yep, yep, our plans all over that. App stores and operating systems. The app store role will be crucial during the metaverse seed stage, providing users with curated highly high quality experiences to keep them engaged with the platform and headset they use to access the metaverse. That'll make up 10% of the market. Devices, significant tech barriers must be overcome before the arrival of comfortable standalone devices that allow for truly immersive experiences. To achieve mass adoption, content will need to work across all types of devices, including for the foreseeable future, personal computers, gaming consoles, and smartphones. And we do know that Upland is most definitely the leader in mobile metaverse features and computing and infrastructure. Hardware companies will face pressure to develop higher performing chip servers and network te tech to render high quality graphics and reduce latency. Absolutely. I don't know. That's all sounds pretty good to me. If you're telling me I got to stick around for another five to 10 years and it's going to be boosted by that uh, rising tide sinks all the turds in the ocean. So yes, pretty exciting stuff, I reckon. And one more web three kind of article to touch on for this week. NFTs are here to stay just not as we once knew them. Um, for as long as I've been talking about NFTs in these kind of shows, this is exactly what I've been saying. NFTs took the world by storm in 2021 with buyers spending millions of dollars on digital collectibles in the arts, entertainment, music, and sports industries. Um, yeah, look at what some of those, those uh, basketball NFTs were going for. They were going for big, big, big dollars. Uh, of course, you bought eight yacht clubs and all the rest of it. Um, what does it say here? In January 2022, NFTs recorded a record trading volume of 5.8 billion. But after just a few months, the market would come to a complete standstill. Following the collapse of Terra, uh, USD, and Luna, the price collapse of Bitcoin, and the industry shattering collapse, collapse of FTX, the NFT market became one of the many, many victims of the crypto winter, with trading volume plummeting to 395 million in August. I don't know. That's. 395 million in a month of sales is probably a lot more realistic and sustainable than 5.8 billion. Um, I don't think anybody would suggest that what was happening back then wasn't just a giant speculative bubble. So, you know, that's speculators are always going to run, play that out and sh Things rebuild from there. The drastic decline has artists, collectors, and dealers wondering whether the industry is finally dying. I don't think so. I think it's, she's just kicking off. Um, what does it say? Yeah, NFTs have the ability to tokenize real-world assets and can provide holders with exclusive physical and digital experiences. We are already seeing this concept of tokenization take off at scale. Yeah, that's the big one. Earlier this year, the European Commission published its Sustainable and Circular Textile Strategy, a new and innovative solution to shape the future of the European textile and fashion industry. 
with digital product passports. Digital product passports are used as a tool for sharing details about the environmental impact of the product. That's boring. I mean, it's cool, but it's boring. Um, bah, 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 bah. I think this this mainly ties in for twinning. If you buy something in the real world, you're going to have a digital equivalent. If you buy something in the digital world, you maybe can do a real world equivalent. Um, I think that's where it's all heading. Yeah, things like loyalty programs, exclusive experiences. Um, if you go to a concert, if you attend it virtually, you're going to have some kind of PO app, uh, PO app digital content rewards. Yeah, that's where it's all going to be. And then, of course, I always bang on about uh, the boring bureaucracy stuff, driver's licenses, yada, 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 all that stuff. So uh, NFT's dead. Hell no, no way. They're barely getting started. That would be my suggestion. Right. What are we doing? Gosh, I said we we're going to do a short show, and here we're running along again. All right, let me try and run through this really quick. So this week we've got a quips from CERNS4 who asks, as Upland continues to grow and evolve and develop more things, and this is a timely question after those couple of articles, what should be the ultimate end goal vision of Upland? Goes on to ask, is the end goal for us all to eventually be in Upland in some kind of complete three-dimensional or even four-dimensional environment and be able to live and work and socialize directly within Upland? Or is it just a space where the end goal is for every player to make a profit? Or is the end goal something else? Two things to unpack there, I guess, would be what do you think Upland's end goal is? And then maybe what's your own personal end goal? What are you hoping to get out of all of this? Why are you here? What are you hoping to do? Any takers? What do you think? What do you think Upland, aside from they want to have a cool product and keep the business operating, what do you think they're hoping to set out to achieve? You know me, I'm just along for the ride. Yeah. Well, what do you think Upland's in it for, though? I have no idea. I know that they've changed direction a few times already. Yep. Um, so I don't like to speculate, although I do love to hear other people's speculations. Nice. Swally, what do you reckon? I think they're trying to work out how play to earn works. I think they're trying to be the first company to be successful. I mean, there's obviously been a lot of people try and they work for a short time, but then they peter out. I think they're trying to be the first one. And I, and I think their potential is huge. I think there is an opportunity that one day people may make a decent living just playing, like spending the hours a day playing Upland, whether it be the Layer 2 games or different parts of it. But I think it's a real possibility. Maybe not in the super short term, depending on what country you live in and your cost of living and stuff, but the potential is there. And I think that's what they're trying to achieve is because I think one day it'll be norm to say, yeah, my job isn't virtual such and such online. And like streamers these days will go to the bank and get a home loan, proving their income for the last two years. I think that'll be in 10 years time. I think that'll be where Upland and games like it are. And I think they're trying to be the leaders in that. Yep. Um, it's interesting. I mean, some of the points that Lily made there, it's it's true. Like it's it's it appears that Upland has changed its focus quite a lot, but have they really? Um when I first started playing, there was metaverse was not a buzzword that they used. NFT was not a buzzword that they used, but we do know that um Dirk and Dan have always said that the reason why it's upland.me is because the me stands for metaverse. So they had that in their mind from way back when. They, they were thinking about NFTs from way back when. Everything was set up as an NFT from way back when. So, um, yeah, I mean, who knows? You, you can't really know where they're headed. Um, I think it's exciting. I think um, in, there's, in so many ways, Upland is at the forefront of what's what's possible like what they're doing on the blockchain with eos like you're talking tens of thousands of mints per second or something well that's not you know that's an exaggeration but it's it's many thousands of mints per second like nobody else is putting stats out like that and that they're really they appear to be really pushing the eos blockchain to you know just 
to see what it can actually do. And there's not many other projects out there that are doing it on EOS or any of the other blockchains. So they're definitely at the leading edge. I always say like, and we know this too, like the information that we get now, that's something that was probably put on the whiteboard in Upland office six year, 12 months ago or more. Some of these partnerships and that they work on. We know Dirk's off, you know, he's in Germany one week, he's here, there and all over the place, shaking hands and, doing all the rest of it. So, yeah, where are we going to be in that five to 10 years? Who, who would know? With the speed that AI is traveling in, with the speed that um, XR, you know, augmented reality and virtual reality, how that's all coming through, who knows? What is the end goal? I don't think, I don't think anybody knows because I don't think anybody has an idea of where this is all headed. I mean, there's still... AI is still like blowing people that are in my circle that don't even know that I kind of interested in this stuff are talk, starting to talk about and use AI. So if it's, if AI is getting mainstream attention like that, you know, and then you add metaverse and, you know, 3d virtual experiences on top of it, who the hell knows? Who the hell knows? I think Lily's got the best take. Just sit down, shut up and enjoy the ride. I think you're right. I, I think the big picture, they haven't changed a lot of the view, but obviously when they get new information, they obviously change their opinion, which is totally fine. I'd expect that. And I think the busy, biggest spit it out, example of that is your background right now, the Spark. Like If you asked them 12 months ago, can you exchange Spark? I think the answer was no. And I, I'd even say Dirk and Dan probably would have said no. I know they said there was unlimited Spark. There was no cap on it, only months ago obviously they're already probably discussing it by that stage um but yeah i don't think three years ago spark would have been considered being an exchangeable token so and i i think they i think that's a good thing that they are looking at with new information make new decisions yeah i mean have they just played around with the wording there like is spark you know if the question was is spark going to be tradable on exchange well even now, the answer is no. Spark's not going to be right. tradable on exchange, but Spark LED is. So, you know, who knows? Yeah, it may have been a, on the whiteboard. That's a technicality. But, I mean, at the yeah, end of the yeah. day, like, if there was, if a player wanted to cash out Spark up until two weeks ago, it was just a no, flat out no. Yep. And, and I would say two years ago, Dirk and Adam would have said that as well. It wouldn't have been, I don't think, would have been something they had yet considered. Um, now that it is, with new information comes new decisions, and I like it. Yeah, absolutely. So that's that's one part of Cerness's question there. The other part was, um, you know, is it just a space where the end goal is for every player to make a profit or is the end goal something else? So personal end goals, I guess he's kind of touching on there. Um, what has he mentioned? Work, play, socialize, uh, live. Well, I'm not going to live in the metaverse. I like the meat suitiverse. Um, work. My job, I can't imagine I could ever do that in the meat sort of us, looking after three to five-year-olds. I don't think that would work out very well on a VR headset. Um, Socialise, definitely that's been the main aspect of this um, ever since way back in the Telegram days. The amount of time and energy and interaction that I've put into Upland, it's probably, if you average it out, it's probably 98%, you know, community-based stuff and it's probably two percent actually in the app doing stuff so that's definitely a large part of it for me um end goals for i don't know that's i always say like my only motivation for any of this stuff is it's fun if if what i'm doing is no longer fun well i just stop doing it it's just as simple as that i'll find something else i'll either find something else within the the app the game whatever it is I'll find something else to do within it or i'll find something else on the peripheral but Definitely, there's not going to be a Ben 68 rage quit cash out situation. Um, that ain't going to happen. Uh, you know, because the end goal there is if we do have just astronomical numbers, the end goal that I've always put out there is a bit of a hyperbolic kind of pie in the sky dream is maybe one day paying off the in real life mortgage with the blue pixels that are, that are in the game. Who knows? Who knows where it could go? I don't know. 
I think that question is a little bit too big to answer in the sense that everybody has different opinions, different wants, different needs. And at the end of the day, you get out of Upland what you want to get out of Upland. And yep. if you want it to be an income, well, then you've got to work out how to do it. And to be honest, that's no different to real life. You get yep. out of anything, what you put into it. And if you want to have a $1,000 income a week from Upland, potential is there. 100% it is. Whether you can do it or not, it's a different story. But you've got to start working on it. It's not going to, you can't just click a few buttons and be there tomorrow. But um, So it's, and I, for me, like I, I've always talked about wanting to own an airline um, or virtual airline. First of all, Upland, I've got to bring that in. I, can, I'm, I don't have the skill set to do that myself, but if I did, you know, <laughs> it'd be interesting. But um, yeah, I think you've got to put into the work to get out what you want and you need to work out what it is that you want. If you're happy just to play, that's fantastic. If you want an income, put the work in to get it, whether it be map assets or other things or just trading or hunting, like you got to work it out. Put the effort yeah. in, you'll get back what you put in. Find your niche, absolutely. I know. Yeah. Lily, any last words everything. on that? Anybody in chat? Five year goal, ten year goal, just along for the ride. I, I'm just along for the ride, and even when it comes to making stuff, uh, earning money is not my reason for doing that. I just want to have stuff in there. Yep. Yep. That's part of the. I'm process. happy to. Just, yeah, I'm happy to just produce everything and keep it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, letting go can be hard sometimes. I know um, some of these low mint numbers stuff that we've put out there, um, and you'll see this coming up with some of the giveaways where we're doing, um, yeah, I really don't want to sell all these. I, I like them. I just want to have them out and about. So, yes, it's a tricky one. All right, so thank you for that, Sir Ness. Now, um, Sir Ness has grabbed himself a Samurai Aquatics and Decor Halloween sign. And I'll also put him in the running for a bonus. Speaking of one of those ones that you can't buy, they're only as giveaways, a bonus Samurai Aquatics and Decor Monument Prize as well. That's going to be given out tonight. So thank you for that, Turnus. Now, if you don't know what quips are, questions, insights, provocations, and statements, um, there's a link to a Google form in the description. Pretty easy, clickety-clack. It's just you can pretty much type whatever you want in there. Don't forget to add your in-game name if you want. And if we use it in the show, you'll win yourself some kind of prize. And like I said, for the next month, it'll be a lot of map assets, map assets because, you know, we got some to give away that can't be purchased. And i got to save some Apex because I did blow a few things through the week. So speaking of some more giveaways, um, Last week's challenge in the NBA server was to get yourself in there and let us know what you thought about the recent sparkless sparklet announcement and do you think the hype was justified? If so, why? If not, why not? Prize is going to be 5,000 UPEX clear after fees and again, a bonus Samurai Aquatics Halloween sign. Now, let's see if the Wheel of Names is going to play nice and of course it isn't. Oh, no, it is. Thank you, Will of Names. I'm having some luck here at the end, finally. So thank you to Sernes, Swally, Laban, Angry Osia, Elslack, Caesar, and Finsky for putting an entry through. Let's see if Swally can make it. Will this be three in a row, Swally? Definitely retry if it is my name. No way, mate. Get that Halloween sign. They can't be purchased. All right, you've missed it anyway. Elslack, Caesar. Caesar, congratulations to you. So that's, let me just write that down. So Ness, 5K and Caesar, 5K and a sign. All right. So that brings us to our live participants giveaway. We have Swali, Laban, uh, Ace, Grizz, Angry, Maui and Lily. I don't believe I missed anybody. No. All right. So this is going to be for a Halloween sign plus a Samurai Aquatics and Decor Monument. So this is going to be a two for this one. And these cannot be purchased from the... They can only be purchased from the secondary markets. 
these are all just been made for giveaways. Congratulations, Grizzly Monument plus a sign. Congratulations and thank you very much. So that brings us up to the this week's challenge. Um, in this week, what did I say here? No, that's. You know what? I didn't even get this week's challenge ready. So this is a very easy one this week to get kicked off. So all you have to do is get on over into the contest channel of the NBA server and say good day. That's all you got to do. If you drop something in there, something in the NBA contest channel in the NBA server, you will go into the running for next week's prize. Now, make sure you get your entries in this month. As I said, your name will roll on a list of all the entrants for a chance to win. Now, next week is going to start to kick up a bit. Um, there's going to be three prizes of up to potentially 10 or more Samurai Aquatics map asset, assets. And yes, they cannot be purchased anywhere except the secondary market. So make sure you get that in. What you got to do is go over there and say good day or drop a GIF or something. Very easy one this week. And that's all I've got. So a reminder that if you're in a time zone that fits in with the Wednesday night recording schedule of starting at 7.30 p.m. AEST, and you'd like to get involved, the link to the weekly Zoom will always be dropped in the NBA server about 15 minutes before the show starts. And don't forget that if you're an upland NFT or Metaverse product, service, or event to promote, we just want to have a chat about Web3 or anything else, opportunities are always available to get up nice and bright and early if you're in the PT for this one or kind of I'm um, doing the other Metaverse and Beyond podcast just um, periodically. Just send me a DM on Discord or drop a comment in the YouTube videos to discuss and secure your spots. That's all I've got this week. Good luck, everybody, with all of the various RNG challenges and sales and whatnots that's going on. And try and get some sleep before this stock car series if you're getting up for that, which I am. So thank you, everybody, and later. This entertainment production is brought to you today by the Samurai Aquatics and Decor Metaventure. Scan that QR code or click that link in the description and dive yourself headfirst into the Samurai Aquatics Discord server to pleasure your peepers on our current and future range of outdoor decor.